today has um, the tangent problem in store before us. However, the tangent problem by itself is pretty teeny weeny. So, it's pretty represent time, baby! Anyway, so what do you need to know before doing the tangent problem? Well, first of all, you need to know slope. And step is pretty obvious if you're watching this channel. Um, so, if you take the slope between two points, the slope is basically just the rate of change between two points. So, you take two points on the graph. So, let's say that this is x1, y1 and x2, y2. I think most of you watching this already know what slope is. It's like basic 8th grade algebra, but doing it. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is the slope. And so this is what slope is. It's basically just the rate of change in x and y between two points. y over y. All right. I don't know why they teach it so extensively in 8th grade. Don't ask me. Anyway. Now, the next thing we're going to get to is solving equations. Okay, yeah, most of you probably know how to do this one. But, um, anyway, now, with calculus, you can do a bunch, and I mean a bunch of things. You can find things like the area under a curve. You can do things like, um, find the area under a three-dimensional curve. Um... Um, what can you do with calculus? What can you do with calculus? What can you do with calculus? Oh yeah, you can find the instantaneous rate of change. And so now, speaking of, how, what does calculus do with rate of change? Well, let's say you have a curve. How do you make a curve? Well, you have a linear line right here. Now, this linear line has a constant slope. So m is just a constant. But now, let's say there's one change in slope. Now let's say there's two changes in slope. Now let's say there's three changes in slope. Now let's say there's a billion changes in slope. And boom, it starts to look like a curve. And so now, this is the progression of something from a line to a curve. It's kind of like how um, when you make shapes, so for example, you've got the pentagon, and then you've got the hexagon, and then you've got the decagon for some reason. I don't know why they keep making shapes. And as there are more and more sides, it starts to look like a circle. There are essentially more and more changes in slope due to the angle of the sides. All right. I don't know why they keep making new shapes, but I'm sure there's a shape out there that someone can discover. Even if it looks like an 1100 are gone, then it's probably just a circle, but um, uh, surely nobody had discovered the uh, 126 gone, right? Right? Anyway, now, this is a unique feature of calculus. While without calculus, you can only find the rate of change linearly. Now, you are now with with no calculus, then you can only find the average rate of change. But over here, over here. Oh, jeez! This is so magnetic; it's sticking to my pen. <gasps> Anyway, geez. And so now, whoop, and but now with calculus, you can find the instantaneous acceleration. Like the acceleration of me, right? Now! Did you catch that? All right. So, now, one of the most common things to do, in fact, the, uh, how can we find? this instantaneous rate of change. Well, let's say we have a VT graph. VT. And we have a curve. curve. And so, now, this, let's say that we take a certain point over here. Or rather, let's go to the hilly areas over here. And 
over here. Now, finding the rate of change with just a point is pretty hard to do. But let's say you take the co coordinates of this. This is a, f of a, and let's say that this is a plus delta x, comma, f of a plus delta x. And so now, for what we can do is draw a line, a secant line. And now, also, some of you will get a throwback to one of my old calculus problems once I do this. So, now, how do we find the slope of this line, the secant line? Well, we take f of a plus delta x. Let's just replace the a. Uh, let's just replace the a with an x and the x with an h for a sec. X, or actually, um, delta x plus h, or let's just keep it the way it is, all right? So, we get a plus delta x minus f of a, do you see what this is starting to look like? Divided by um, a plus delta x minus a, we cancel out these terms and oh, this is a throwback. Let's just change some stuff one sec. Let's make the this, this, let's make this, this, let's make this, this, and this, this. <gasps> so f of x, now why do we have this pesky guy over here? Well, we have this pesky guy over here because, let's say that now delta x gets closer. Now, we can approximate the slope of this line in more detail. And then, let's say it gets even closer. Then, we can approximate it in even more detail. And now, let's say it gets really close. Now, we basically are able to see the rate of change instantaneously at this one point. So as the difference between these two points becomes zero, or in other words, as delta x or h approaches zero, then these two gradually become the same point, and that secant line starts to become a tangent line. And we can estimate the slope of a tangent line, thus the slope of one point on a line, by doing this. And so this is the tangent problem. Thank you everybody for watching. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.